last of this three-year project period. And for that reason, then, I will talk about the faculty members that belong to the center and a broader spectrum of the research portfolio that that group of people allows us to uh, access. Again, though, open source is the glue that holds it all together. So our background, we're farmers. And so it gives us a particular way of looking at these problems because, frankly, uh, our families keep us uh, well grounded. When we do stupid things, they seem to tell us fairly quickly about it. And we tend to put stupid widgets on their machines. And if we stop their machine from running, we hear about it pretty quickly. I've done that to my brothers. And uh, this is pictures of our farm in Northeast Colorado. Uh, you know, eked out with all of my stuff. And uh, avoiding our warranties right and left, hopefully not. But, uh, uh, you see in the map there, it's a rather large farm. It covers four counties in Colorado and, and Nebraska. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's wheat and corn, millet, uh, sugar beets, things like that. See a fair bit of irrigation uh, and a fair bit of dry land. Very different scenario from what you see here in Indiana, uh, but uh, with some similarities. Uh, here's a picture. We're also engineers and software engineers. Uh, we make things. We like to connect them to our machines. This is a picture of Aaron putting an antenna on the roof of one of his tractors. Uh, a sensor boat from a sensor network we designed in the top. Uh, an early instance of, of this ISO blue, which uh, kind of launched many of these ideas. And then in the <coughs> bottom to the right, uh, Aaron getting ready to avoid his warning. <laughs> So it was really three open source projects that kind of brought us to the point of writing the proposal that Clark agreed to fund. Uh, one, which we call meta, mobile apps for metadata sensing, or really autogenic, meta, uh, autogenic mobile apps, and watershed uh, apps. So in the picture on the right at the top, you see uh, the icon for our watershed delineation app and uh, an image of the actual production of the watershed it does. Sam Noel wrote this app. So the thinking that was really kind of driving us here uh, some four or five years ago when Dennis and I and Aaron began to work together was that many of the software tools we wanted to use in agriculture and we wanted to use in our own research were quite clunky. Uh, we would look at a particular yield monitor, for example, and want to adjust some setting to get a different sort of data out of it and have to go in 30, 30 views deep into that uh, that monstrosity in order to sort of try to set that thing. Uh, there are various issues like that, but we looked at the way apps were selling on the app store and we saw that, in fact, it was the simple apps, the one function app, the app that only does one, one little thing that mattered. In fact, what people tended to do instead of having an app to rule them all was to have a single app, or, or a, 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 sorry, a, a host of apps that do particular things for you. And so that was the idea behind this project that was funded. Uh, by USDA NIFTA. Uh, watershed was really an idea here that, in fact, because of the availability of high resolution LIDAR imaging in Indiana, farmers could actually see how watersheds looked on a very local field scale. And so when you were wanting to make decisions about spraying or about some modification to the flow of water, you could sit with right there at a spot in the field and see how it would work. Then came uh, ISO Blue Android, <coughs> ISO Blue 2.0, and, and the, the project that was mentioned in, uh, that Repo has, has completed. Uh, that project was really because we were not able to get the data off our machines in the way that we wanted. We, had, we couldn't guarantee that when we went through the yield monitor and downloaded the file that we knew what, what processing had been done on that data, so we wanted to be able to understand that. So we built this device to sniff the CAN bus. It never talks, only sniffs. Uh, and, and that project, uh, you'll hear a little bit more about as well. But because of the publication value or the press that that project got, you know, in some ways we were, uh, we were scolded a little bit for doing such a thing. But it brought, uh, it brought us some notoriety that allowed the, the, the bigger ag industry saw, and that's where the Open Ag Data Alliance came about. And so Aaron has gone around the country, I don't know if you can see that very well, but. Uh, talking about how OATA works. And in this graphic has been used so many times, I just show it. But we talk here about a farmer named Frank and an agronomist named Andy who want to work together to create a, a prescription planting map for this farm. Uh, and of course, Andy's in the middle of it all. 
And we take very much the farmer perspective. Andy's overwhelmed with the need to get data from all these sources. And the whole idea then of OATA is to automate this process and get Andy out of the loop, but still retain Andy, sorry, Andy's the agronomist. Frank's the farmer, I gotta, I gotta make sure that Frank, Frank's in control of Frank's data. Frank does no longer have to manually wrangle all of that. So since we started that project, uh, we've had these milestones. And one of the very first ones was a live cloud connected yield monitoring demo with Case in Holland and Geosys that goes back to December 14 uh, on the last one of the last days of Aaron's uh, corn harvest. Um, and it was one of the first times we actually tried to create a marketing video, which in the, ended up being of some use to Case New Holland. Um, and it's still on the internet. I even star in it. Um, Aaron's uh, uncle in that. Aaron let me drive his combine. And since I'm a farm boy, I do know how to drive a combine. But I'm telling you what, I felt very bad <laughs> because I ran over a fair bit of corn that day. Sorry, Aaron. Um, since then, then we began to work with Valley Irrigation, and Valley Irrigation's uh, API is, is was certified as OATA conformant. Uh, fast forward to nearly today, uh, OATA wins a hackathon at the Nutraco Agrivision Summit in the Netherlands in July of 2017, and that's the graphic, one of the graphics for a Swine Smarts uh, concept product that they came up with. And you see on the right, Aaron and Sam Knoll and a bigger team of people from the Netherlands uh, hoisting a, aloft their uh, golden gilded swine trophies <laughs> that were presented to them by Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. Rush with greatness. Boy, we, I hope we haven't peaked at the very top, but that was a pretty good day. Uh, then, most recently, the Trellis Framework for Sharing Protoss audit, audit Data released, and you'll see a demonstration of that here in a little bit. And then, continuing to work with that gateway, uh, in their spade three and spade four projects on these implementation guidelines for OAuth to Open ID Connect. And that, of course, is a very important aspect of what we bring to this whole organization or to this center is this, these sorts of connections that we hope to make and keep making. I also want to quickly thank our supporters. Since those early days, these companies and individuals have supported us in various ways. Got another page here in case you don't see yours yet. And we want to thank you very much. I also want to point out, you see kind of a breadth of a bigger ag industry here, from the very small to the very large, to a, a small startup uh, like Farm Logs, a big company like Monsanto, a small company like Centricity, uh, a farmer named Tyler McClendon, who is a very large farmer, but nevertheless supports what we do, the USDA, Valley Irrigation, Purdue University, which has put a lot of this, Spencer Technologies, a startup in the research park at Purdue, and Winfield United, and Wilson Produce, and Yelp. And we can thank Yelp today for buying our lunch. <laughs> so on to the FAR project, and I, I don't know, how am I doing on the time? Can you just read? Why oh, is it 1126? When is mine over? <laughs> Take more than four okay, well, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Okay, so the, the FAR project is the reason that we are here. We, we wrote a proposal to the Foundation for Food and Ag Research. It's a foundation that was set up in the 2014 Farm Bill, and I think uh, given a couple hundred million dollars to spread, really doing translational research or translation of research from university into industry. So as, it would, as luck would have it, I think we were in the perfect spot at the perfect time with the perfect idea, and so we managed to get that funded. What the FAR project will do for us is enable us to support eight graduate RAs, four undergraduate RAs, and then to pay for things like today, and things that will go on over the next 36 months. Uh, cash from FAR is about is half of this. Purdue is matched at a very high rate here. We really do want to thank Purdue. And then our partners in the, in the grant itself, Centricity, Winfield, Ag Gateway, and ADM have also contributed cash and in kind to support this, this effort. Um, here are five slides, or four slides actually, that kind of talk about the gist of the whole FAR project. And I'm going to probably speed through them because Aaron's covered them uh, uh, quite a bit here. But on the left, you've got a background where you have sort of an existential grand, ch grand challenge problem that faces the whole ag industry, which is basically feeding the world. 
Uh, you know, obviously this is important to do. In the middle, we see these issues that the value of data, which we hope will help to make it so that we can feed the world, is really only achieved when you can fuse it from multiple sources. Public research in in uh, big in uh, in uh, Land grant universities is not so easily shared today, and it's large not so much that the researchers don't want to share it, but that the wrangling of it and the logistical difficulties of sharing the research uh, makes that hard, uh, and so on. You know, there are various these sorts of things. And our solution framework really is to build this open source culture that Aaron talked. It's sort of to mimic the open source culture we're trying to build in industry with one that we're trying to build amongst uh, university researchers at Purdue. And so the analog here is university research farms and research farm managers and the researchers themselves that run experiments on farms. Purdue University is a very large farmer in the state of Indiana, one of the largest. And so this resource and this capability and this living lab that, that these, these, this, this provides for us is something that should be used. And the data from that should be available to translate and to be uh, used by you. Um, so I, we talk about how we're going to do this, and I'm going to go right here to this real-time data exchanges project. We will set up five particular projects that involve data sharing amongst Purdue University research groups. And in these data projects, we will design the API and the schema that allows data sharing to take place in there. Because it's our philosophy that data exchange APIs are never really designed in the abstract. University research and computer science has looked at these kinds of things in the abstract for many years, and the abstract doesn't get us to really sharing data. And so you do this specifically case by case by case, and so it's faster, and it, it engages this open source culture in the sense that I'm able to then create something and implement it quickly. If you publish it in the open source, it's then available for the world to use or to not use or to ridicule or to change. And this is what we think is um, the big advantage. Here is, of course, a, a slide that, this, these slides actually came from the FAR proposal. They required us to submit five slides which describe the whole thing. And so and they weren't really intended to be read from so far away. They were meant for them. But you see the five projects that we're going to be working on. One is machinery, crops, and soil. One is food system logistics, soil mapping, farm scale meteorology, and remote sensing, and uh, multispectral. I'll move on. I'll also come to this this afternoon. We'll talk more about how we intend for the center to be run. Uh, the expected impact, though, is that we want to launch this vibrant community for open source innovation that attacks these food and ag grand challenge problems and accelerate the innovation cycle. Now. FAR very much, in, in investing their money, they very much want this center to be a thing that's sustainable. So after three years, FAR's not probably going to give us any more money. Of course, I'll probably be there asking. Who knows? I'm always asking. But in order to do that, we have to create a center that can, that can live on and be, uh, be sustainable. And so we've grown the group of faculty that are involved in this in order to do this, in order to grab a bigger collection of research expertise. And so I'm going to quickly go through this group of people. You've met Aaron. Mark Bell does information theory and radar. This is going to be important for advanced sensing and communications problems that we might solve. Larry Beal is in IT and does remote sensing. Is really the architect behind the, their multi-spec software, which we are going to make open source as part of this project. Uh, Dennis and Jim Camarado from Agronomy is a soil scientist. Melba Crawford does um, um, remote sensing and multi-resolution image analysis. Amanda's over here in food science. Bruce Erickson's not here, but he's, he's, from ag, he's from agronomy, but he's really an ag economist, so he connects very well to the business side of agriculture. Jim Garrison is from Aero and Astro. He's a remote sensor, but he uses satellite systems as signals of opportunity to do soil moisture sensing. So in other words, when GPS is broadcasting and the GPS signal bounces off the ground, you can, get the you can get the return direct from the satellite and direct from the ground, compare them, and learn something about the soil moisture from that aspect of that. So what you can see we've broadened this whole idea quite a bit. Uh, Richard Grant is a, is a meteorologist. 
Uh, Professor Jin, who's in the back here, does phenotyping, robotic greenhouses, and sensing. Then you know me, David Love, who's in communication theory. Again, this, this comes down to the fact that we design and develop telematics devices, and we intend for them to be um, um, very innovative. Haley Oliver and Amy Reedman, who's in the back over here, will talk to you guys about uh, video analytics and video as a sensor. And this is something that we're pushing and we're thinking is very important, especially if we begin to try to roll out autonomous operation of machines, is that autonomy, in some sense we can do autonomy today, but I don't think autonomy would really work today very well in the following way. I know my brothers, okay? We have many thousands of acres in Colorado. We could probably stand to have a couple of autonomous tractors, but the problem will be if we don't get a, a a, a labor-saving advantage from that machine, we won't use it. It's going to have to have that. And what will happen is, if I set that autonomous tractor out there running and it stops because the disc plugs, and it doesn't know what to do, they aren't going to use it because it didn't save them anything. At that point, you've got to drive out the field, which is 30 miles away, and restart the machine. And so I think a lot of autonomy is going to be about situational awareness. It's going to be about a, an operator who's overseeing and running many machines maybe sitting in one, maybe not sitting in one, but needs to be able to watch them all at once. And a lot of machine intelligence is going to go into that process, but it's going to come down to a human in the loop for a very long time. And we need to make the systems that allows that human to be in the, in the loop. And video is a sensor, audio is a sensor, these things I think will be very important. Professor Sarah Swat in the back from Ag Bioengineering, uh, mobile apps development, natural resources, crowdsourcing, Mark Tucker, who was mentioned, is our, is our media uh, and uh, communications person. And Mark Ward over here in statistics is really our big data person. We also work with a lot of centers around Purdue. I'm going to go quickly through these. These have been mentioned in some, in some ways here. Maybe things worth mentioning are Sirius, the Center for Cybersecurity, works with us. And Gateway, we're working with. JTRP, the Joint Transportation Research Program. You might ask, why in the world is that there? But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how you're going to ever have an autonomous tractor if that autonomous tractor can't drive autonomously on the road. If I have to send out a crew of people to move the darn things from one field to another in my farm that goes 35 miles, they might as well sit in the tractor all day. So, you know, you, machines that are already too big for the roads are going to be interacting on the roads. We have a poster about this over here, which I think could be some interest. And then again, we also are connecting to NSF's big, big data, Midwest hub, uh, through their digital apps. Oh, where are we at now? I'm like seven minutes over? <laughs> okay, so we'll make these slides available to you. There's a, many research projects here. I wanted to make, the point I really wanted to make was, okay, APIs are great, schemas are great, Aaron, you know, open source, you know, I can't say this uh, thing about ideas having whatever, <laughs> uh, but we also do hardcore research, and we want to hardcore implement this, and we want to release this stuff in the open source. So these topics that I have listed here that we'll probably kind of just can't go through are things that are our expertise and the expertise of the larger group, and we want to share them with you and want to find out how they're useful to your company. And we also do blockchain. Does, in fact. So again, open source, open standards, market forces, and our research working together. I'll end with the same slide that Aaron had here, and I'll turn it over back to Aaron, I think. Right, Aaron? Yeah, we'll do a WADA, and then we'll do a demo. Okay. Thanks.